Yay! Yay! Let's do some basic physics regarding the motion of objects, right? Because that's really what it comes down to, uh, what physics really is, is predicting the motion of objects. So um, we'll start by looking at what's called kinematics, um, which is basically motion with constant acceleration. Um, and uh, commonly, these, there are a set of four equations that everyone tries to memorize um, that'll pretty much get you where you want to go. Um, you just choose whatever equation is right for your problem and, and, then, and then solve for whatever you need. Um, we'll, we'll do examples of those as we go along. Um, first, let me show you where these formulas came from. Um, if you've had calculus, that's fine. You can follow this. If you want to just fast forward and use the formulas, you can do that too. I don't care. Uh, okay, so first of all, let's look at the definitions. Um, speed or velocity, right? Because generally it's a vector, but velocity is defined as the three lines, uh, the change of position with respect to time, right? Um, and this really is an average velocity um, because that's just, the change of position is just where you end up minus where you start. Um, so for example, um, I could say that I start in Oklahoma City and I drive to Dallas, right? So that's maybe 180 miles. Um, and if it takes me three hours to get there, then my velocity would be 180 divided by three or uh, what, 60 miles per hour. But that's the average, right? If you actually take that drive, um, maybe you'll go 60 miles an hour some of the time, but some of the time you're stopped. Maybe you stop to get a snack uh, and the rest of the time, maybe you go 75 or whatever the speed limit is. So just taking your final position minus your initial position, right? This is x final minus x initial over delta t. That just gets you the average velocity for your whole trip. Okay. Um, and in the same way, let's put down another definition. Acceleration is just defined as your change of velocity with respect to time. That's sort of an average acceleration. But here for kinematics, for all the situations we're going to be talking about, this is constant. It's just going to be a number, right? And if the acceleration is zero, that just means your speed doesn't change. Your V final is the same as your V initial. Okay. Um, so this means uh, your A, um, A is equal to uh, V final minus V initial over delta t in the same way uh, that v average is x final minus x initial. Um, so uh, then I could write this. I could write that v final is just uh, v initial plus a delta t. Well, look at that. There's one of them already. Neat. Okay. Uh, in fact. Uh, here's another one. Cool. Um, oh, well, let's go ahead. Let me let me back that out for a second. Let me go ahead and write this in the way that we wrote this one. So um, x final is x initial plus v average delta t. Right, I can write it like that. Um, so in the language of calculus, to get the other two formulas, uh, in the language of calculus, what we would do is we say, uh, instead of a x final minus x initial, what we do in calculus, remember, is we, we get those things really, really close together. And the delta t, we get that to be really, really, really tiny. And so then we say that v, the velocity is dx dt, just as an example. Uh, so that means if I solve for the little tiny bit of distance, a uh, little tiny bit of displacement is just v dt. And then what I can do, remember in calculus, I can integrate both sides. So this tells me that x is equal to, ooh, that's an indefinite integral, right? So I need that extra constant, like x plus c, right? But 
Um, the one on the right-hand side is going to be the same. So let me just collect all the constants on one side of the equation. Um, this is going to be some other C. So this is just going to be um, literal V dt. And then I'm, I'm going to have my, my constant after I'm done integrating. Um, uh, and then look, what if I take this over here? That's going to be my v final. That's my v at some later time, right? So what if I took that v bloop, and plugged it right in there? So my x is just going to be v initial plus a uh, dt, like that. Um, so this is just going to become a v dt. So this is just going to become v initial times t plus a. Oops, I forgot my t, didn't I? A t dt, like that. Okay, and what happens if I integrate? Well, a is constant. That's the whole deal with kinematics, right? A is just a number, so it comes outside of the integral. I'm going to leave just a little space. And then I just have the integral of t dt. What's the integral of t dt? Just t squared over 2, right? Pretty easy. Uh, so this is going to be 1 half a t squared. And then I have that constant at the end. And what we do in physics, what is that constant? It represents something. Um, well, if I'm adding it and it equals a distance, that must have units of distance, uh, like a length. Um, so how do I find it? Set t equal to 0. So at t equals 0, x at time 0 equals c. That's just your initial position. Cool. So that constant, and that's usually what ends up happening, is these constants are just initial conditions. So this constant just ends up being the initial position. So if I move that x initial over to that side, if I subtract it, this tells me that delta x is just vi times t plus one half a t squared. Neat. There's another one. So that's another equation. Um, look, one of these equations involves v, a, and t, right? And then another one involves x, v, and t. And then another one, the one I just did, involves uh, x and a and t. V, v initial is just a number. So far, they've all included t. They've just dropped one of the other variables. Um, what if I don't know time? Uh, I can get the last one. What you do is... Um, this one tells you that delta x is just equal to a v times delta t, or we've kind of dropped the delta, haven't we? Oops. v times t. Okay, so that means that t is delta x over v. Drop that in here. Right there and right there, because that'll eliminate t. Um, and then it's just sort of a mess of algebra. And in the interest of keeping this kind of short, at least as short as possible, here's what you get. Um, so this is a, an example in the book. This is left as an exercise to the reader, right? Um, so this means what you get finally, you will get v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. Neat. Okay, so we have four equations. These are our four basic kinematic equations with which we're going to solve uh, a whole bunch of problems. Okay, so let me go to another page and let me write down uh, kind of a sample, sample problem. Um, okay, let's write them down. Uh, I have delta x is equal to v average. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, just to make it easier to write, let's drop that delta, because we know that that's, usually we start at time zero, right? So I can just write, let me just write t. That'll make it look a little easier. Um, my change in v, which I'll write like this. 
Uh, v final is equal to V initial plus A T. I can do that. Uh, I'm going to have my displacement is V I. Oops. Keep saying I'm going to drop delta T and then I forget. V I times T plus one half A T squared. Cool. And then I'm going to have, um, what was my last one? V final squared equals V initial squared plus two A delta X. Okay. So these are my four. And let's suppose we have the following thing. Um, here's Alice. And Alice zooms by a stoplight. And at the stoplight, there is Bob. Uh, Alice moves at a rate of 20 meters per second, constant, constant 20 meters per second. So she flies through uh, the green light. Bob starts from rest, and Bob accelerates at four meters per second squared, right? So the light turns green, Alice flies through at this constant speed, but Bob starts from a stop. Um, and the question is, um, A, this is sort of a typical kind of a catch-up problem. Uh, this one is, is one that's pretty common to lots of textbooks. Um, how long until Bob catches up? Right? At some point, if Bob just keeps accelerating, at some point, Bob's going to catch up to Alice. So how long, what's the time until Bob catches up? Um, and then we're going to ask, uh, how fast is he going when he catches up? And at what point, you know, how, how far down the road? What's the distance when Bob catches up? Uh, okay, how long till Bob catches up? The key to this problem um, is to try to figure out what does it mean when you catch up to someone? What it means is, if you catch up to someone, then you've both gone the same distance, right? You've both gone from the stoplight out to some point far away, but you've both gone exactly the same distance. That's what it means to catch up. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to write down for A, I'm gonna, for Alice, I'm going to write down what distance does she go in some amount of time? Uh, well, there's no, she's going at a constant rate of speed, right? So Delta X A is just equal to V times T, right? That's for Alice. What about Bob? Bob's accelerating. So what represents how far he's going to go during this time? Well, it's that third one, right? Because he's accelerating. And so for Bob, it looks like this. Delta X Bob is going to be V initial times T plus one half a t squared. Okay, that's how far Bob goes in some amount of time t. And the whole idea is if they catch up, if Bob catches up to Alice, they've both gone the same distance. So these are equal. Cool. So what you do is you just set one equation equal to the other and solve for t. That'll get you the t. So this means that v times t is equal to uh, this is V Alice, right? V initial. Oh, what's what's Bob's initial speed? Zero. He starts from a stop. So that part of the equation isn't even there. So uh, I don't I don't really I don't even need that. Uh, this is going to be one half times a t squared. Cool. Uh, so this is going to be uh, what? Uh, well, I'm solving for t, right? So one thing I could do to make this a lot easier is I could divide both sides by t as long as t is not zero. If t is zero. You can't divide by zero, so that's crazy. But I can do that because t being zero is one of the solutions. I know they've both gone the same distance at t equals zero. Well, that's the setup of the problem, right? That's not even. That's not very interesting. Sure, at t equals zero, they they've sort of caught up to each other. In other words, they start at the same place at the stoplight. So go ahead and divide out T 
one of those t's um so that tells me that v alice okay so that's going to be 20 meters per second a lot of times when i do these problems i'm just going to drop the units that kind of horrifies some people but it just makes it easier to read um so you can put the units back in just for practice if you want so 20 is just going to be one half the acceleration is four times t cool so that means that t just doing a little bit of algebra divide by two t is 10 seconds all right so it's going to take 10 seconds uh, for bob to catch up to alice and then we can ask once we know that we can say um at what distance Uh, does Bob catch up? Uh, well, if I know that it's 10 seconds, I can both Bob and Alice have gone the same distance, right? Well, that's what we said when we know that Bob catches up to her. So you can use either equation you want. In fact, let's just do both just to make sure that we solved it right. So at what distance does Bob catch up? Um, delta X is one half a t squared okay so that's one half times four times ten squared uh what is that ten squared it's a hundred uh divided by two is 50 times four is 200 200 meters neat and i better get the same answer if i do it for alice uh, that was for bob for alice i could just do 20 uh, times 10, 200. Neat. So sure enough, it works. We, we solved it right. Sure enough, it works both ways. So after 200 meters or 10 seconds, uh, Bob catches up to Alice. Um, and then finally, just to show you how the other equation works, um, how fast is Bob going when Bob catches up to Alice? So for this one, um, Probably the easiest thing to do is to use that last one because I want to know a V final, right? I want to know Bob's final speed. So uh, what uh, is Bob's final speed? Okay, so V final squared. Well, actually, we can do that real quick, right? Let's just... Take the square root of both sides. So V final is just the square root of V initial squared. Oh, well, there was no V initial, so I don't have to worry about that. 2A delta X, so it's 2 times 4 times 200. Um, so let's see, 2 times 40 times 2, so that's going to be 8 to square root of 1600 or 40, 40 meters per second. There we go. That's Bob's final speed when he catches up. Okay, so that's sort of a typical problem that you might see um, using uh, at least three out of these four equations. So um, coming up, I, I won't bother deriving them anymore. We'll just consider them to be um, already memorized, right? Um, so we will continue to use these and solve some more problems.